So, being an Englishman, yeah. the first thing I started reading the, the Bible, the Bible yeah. which I liked. Yeah. You know the stories of Jesus, about God. I didn't understand so much of it, but I liked it. I used to read the Old Testament. So, I looked at Christianity, and there were things which I liked. But this is, this is my, uh, my opinion, whether, whether people agree or not. I found that it didn't really offer so much structure on how to live your life. Like, be a good person, go to church. But I wanted more structure. So I looked at the Old Testament, and you know where it has more laws. Like, you should do this, you should eat this, this is how you should have uh, uh, marital relationships. It has more laws. So I, I looked, I looked at this. Can, can I continue with the answer? Yeah, 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 no yeah, 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 no problem. Yeah, yeah. So I looked at the, the Old Testament, which I liked, and I continued reading the Bible, but I wasn't actually convinced by any, uh, by Christianity or Judaism. So I started looking at uh, Hinduism, Buddhism, etc. Then this is, this is my, this is my thoughts. It's, I'm, whether a person agrees or not, this is my this is this is my thought process. I felt that religions were made up by people, but there has to be a God. There has to be a life hereafter, and you have to try and live a good life. So I tried to follow what I felt comfortable with. Like I felt you shouldn't eat pork. Uh, I stopped drinking alcohol. Uh, I felt that you should have relationships inside marriage, and I just felt like I just tried to follow this, but not. Uh, identify with any particular religion. Then I was in my, my friend's house and there was a, a brother from uh, who he, he's West Indian brother, he had embraced Islam a year before. Uh, his brother's name Nasruddin. He used to be called Foxy. So everyone, everyone said in the house, Foxy's coming. He came in the room and he spoke about Islam for five or 10 minutes. For me, it was so clear, so straightforward. His message was, the message of Islam, but this is, what, this is what the brother said from what I remember. Obviously, it was a long time ago. God is one, worship him alone. How do you know uh, one day we're gonna go back to God, you're going to be judged, paradise or hellfire. How do you know what God wants? He sent messengers and books. When I heard it, for me, it's like um, it wasn't new. It was the, the example I give is you know your coat. Imagine you're you're in someone's house, and they say, "Brother, remember your, you left your coat," and you say, "Yeah, yeah, yeah," and you go back and get it. That's why how I felt. Even though it's the first time I heard about Islam, when the brother spoke to me, it was like, "Oh, I know this. This is it. my heart agreed with it." So then. Alhamdulillah, a few days later, you know, the youngsters, they don't know, you know, yellow pages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, before, before internet, we had yellow pages. I looked up in the yellow pages. I looked up the, the mosque. I went to the mosque. I knocked on the door. I want to know about Islam. A brother, he was from Bangladesh. Uh, may Allah reward the brothers who took care of me. When I said to him, I want to know about Islam, for me as a, a young English person, what he said, it, it just shocked me. He said, I can't tell you about Islam. First, you have to come to my house. Yeah. So for me, someone I've never met before, he, he took me to his house. And you know the normal Muslim way, he put the cloth on the floor. Yeah, yeah. He brought a bowl and he said, when we, he said, when we, when we eat, we eat as, you know, like humble servants. We sit on the floor. He brought the bowl to wash our uh, hands. The bro was Bengali, so he brought his, what he considered to be his food. And he made separate food for me in case, you know, my tongue couldn't take the, the chili. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I, 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 I couldn't believe like how kind and how generous these brothers were. So three or four days later, Alhamdulillah, I embraced Islam. So that was about, that was uh, 93. Yeah, so, Alhamdulillah. So now as a, um, an old man, um, as he, like, I mean, uh, obviously he wasn't, um, he wasn't born a Muslim and he came to Islam. Alhamdulillah. And I had a lot of, um, probably like more than 10, probably thousand people that usually asking me how to, how to come to Islam, how to get to know about Islam, how to, 
like I think they thinking that they Islam is the true way, but they don't know where to start or how to start. So, what's your advice should be to them? Like, what would you say to them? Like, oh, people who are looking into Islam. Um, yeah, I had a lot of them on my on my platform. Um, you say start reading Quran first, or go to some uh, share the scholars, or how could they start? Generally, you know, there's a a verse in in Surah Baqarah. It yeah. just comes. I believe 256, it comes just after uh, Ayatul Kursi, mm -hmm. where Allah says, La ikraha fi deen, qad tabaynu rushdu min al -ghayb. It mentions that there's no compulsion in religion. So in, in Islam, or any religion, we can't force someone to believe, we can't force someone to disbelieve. But then Allah continues by saying, but the truth is clear from error. So, but, what, so when something is true, the person's heart should recognize it. Yeah. But I would advise the people to, you know, be sincere. Yeah. Ask the Creator to guide them to open their heart to the truth, and yeah, read Quran, and go to like trustworthy, practicing people, and ask questions. But yeah, don't don't be shy to ask because yeah. if I can't answer, I can find someone else who can answer. But but I'm I'm going to say this as a Muslim. Islam has all the answers. As, as long as a person's asking sincerely and they want the truth, Islam has the answer. Yeah, Thank so, you so much. No problem. The last question I want you to give us, uh, even for me, including me, I know is um, the deed is between you and Allah, but I want you to give us like from the morning to next morning, uh, in terms of doing deed, in terms of like, in terms of like, you know what I mean, like. Day day to day life, like what do you like? You wake up in the morning, Fajr, then after Fajr, Zohar, then after Zohar, Asr, then Isha, then there's any extra deed, there's any extra way of uh, um, way of life, like no, I know it's like, <laughs> just just work, family, family. Uh, we're yeah. we're busy with family, we're yeah. busy with work. Yeah, we try and be a good Muslim. So you know, we are we are trying our best yeah. to do the minimum pray five times a day fast in ramadan give our give our wives their rights look after our children yeah. our family our parents yeah. and then you know try to read quran every day yeah, and every then day. oh every day so something long. even yeah. if it's one page i'm yeah. not i'm not not the quran but we try to read something every day some of us maybe the last time we opened quran it was last month <laughs> but Alhamdulillah. Allah us. no but every i would I, I would i would i would advise myself yeah. and other brothers yeah. You know, the, there's a hadith from Aisha yeah. anha, in which she said that the Prophet وسلم, said, uh, yeah. Yeah. The most beloved actions to Allah are those which are done regular, even if it's small. So I would advise every Muslim, even if it's one page, read one page of Quran every day. Once, we be, once that becomes comfortable, you know, when it becomes comfortable, a day you miss it and you feel bad. That, you know, the one page, then two pages, then three pages. And also, for myself and others, yeah. try to read Quran in the Arabic as it's an Arabic Quran. Try to memorize it, try to learn Tajweed, but also read the translation. Yeah. And also, as a Muslim, read something from the Sunnah every day. Sunnah well. yeah. like, even if it's two hadith, three hadith from Bukhari, from Muslim, from the Riyadh Salihin, anything we don't understand, ask a trustworthy Muslim. But connect ourselves with Allah and His Messenger. Yeah. Allah. Yeah. Thank you so much. No Sorry problem. to take your time. No problem, yeah. my pleasure. Now I just want you to recite something to us, hold the mic, anything, anything from Quran, and that should be the last question. I'm sorry. I keep asking you more and more, but it's just... Um, Alhamdulillah. Any verses, Alhamdulillah, maybe just, any class, maybe any, uh, any, any verses. Just very simple because from what I've understood, the companions sometimes when they would gather yeah. and some of them when they would leave each other, yeah. they would recite this surah. Very short surah, but the meaning is very powerful. Okay, mashallah, that's the first time I know that. Uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wal-Asr. Inna al-insan la fi khus illa al-ladina amanu wa amilu salihati wa tuwasaw bil-haqqi wa tuwasaw bil-sabr. Allah. A brief translation, you know, Allah, the Most High, He swears by time, will ask. And Allah is the owner of everything, the creator of everything. So He has the right to swear by whatever He wishes. Whereas the creation, 
we cannot swear by anything other than Allah. We can't swear on our parents, we can't swear, we're only upon Allah. But Allah, He swears by time because He owns everything, He created everything. And then He says, all of mankind is in loss. Person is rich, person is poor, person is educated, person is uh, ignorant, a person is black, a person is white, male, female. Allah states all mankind is in loss. And then Allah makes an exception and it's, He mentions four things. Except for those who believe. So they have the correct belief in Allah, His Messenger وسلم, the last day. A person should learn the correct belief. The person does righteous deeds. They, we should do righteous deeds with sincerity according to the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم. That's the second characteristic. Third, we encourage each other and we help each other upon the truth. And we encourage each other and we help each other on patience. The last thing, the scholars they mention when Allah the Most High mentions something in Quran in an order, it has a reason. So Allah mentioned four things to save ourselves from being lost. Iman, the correct Iman, righteous deeds, Encouraging, encouraging each other towards the truth, so as in joining the good and forbidding the evil, and being patient. Why did Allah mention patience last? The scholars say because whenever a person believes, does righteous deeds, and he enjoins the good and forbids the evil, he is going to be harmed by the people, by their tongue and by their hands. So we have to be patient. May Allah, Allah help us. So no, Allah reward you for that message. I mean, all of us. Allah reward you for that message. I mean, I mean. No problem. Nice to meet you. Thank all you. the best. Allah. 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 I usually go to. Um, I just go to different places, different um, okay. cities. Mashallah. And I'm not, I'm not really educated like he. All of us are learning. Yeah, all but. Instead of doing something bad, I said, why not do something good? Mashallah, it's good. It's something good. that maybe I could get, I, I could get reward from, oh, so, from it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because before I used to do, um, I used to do job, and I okay. used to get a lot of million views, 70, okay. 100 million views. Okay. But I've never been proud of what I do. I'm doing and that. I said, why not change it to Islamic? Change it to, to the yeah, word of good. Allah. Alhamdulillah. But right now, Alhamdulillah. Even though I get it's, it's more views, but I'm happy inside. Like when I go home, I'll accept it. I'll accept it. Yeah. But I'll increase us all in good. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you. Jazakum Allah. Wa ya kum. Wa ya kum. Wa ya kum. Allah. Huh? No. I just no.